The Pot That Juan Built by Nancy Andrews Coble. Pictures by David Diaz. The Pot That Juan Built. This is the pot that Juan built. Juan Quesada was born in Santa Barbara, Tuat. Tutuaca, Mexico, in 1940. When he was one year old, his family moved to Mata Ortiz, a village of dirt roads and adobe houses on the windswept plains of Chihuahua. It was there that Juan dis rediscovered the pottery-making process of the Casas Grandes people, who had vanished from that part of Mexico 600 years ago. These are the flames so sizzling hot that flickered and flared and fired the pot, the beautiful pot that Juan built. These are the cows, all white and brown, that left manure all over the ground, that fueled the flames so sizzling hot, that flickered and flared and fired the pot, the beautiful pot that Juan built. This is the brush of hair from his head that spread the paints all black and red, that colored the pot for all to admire before it was baked in the cow manure fire, the crackling flame so sizzling hot that flickered and flared and fired the pot, the beautiful pot that Juan built. These are the rocks of red and black brought down from the mountain on burrow back to make into paint all black and red, spread with the brush of hair from his head that colored the pot for all to admire before it was baked in the cow manure fire, the crackling flame so sizzling hot that flickered and flared and fired the pot, the beautiful pot that Juan built. This is the tool that's made out of bone that rubbed the pot until it shone and glittered and glowed and glistened and glimmered and gleamed and beamed and sparkled and shimmered to show off the paints all black and red spread with the brush of hair from his head that colored the pot for all to admire. Before it was baked in the cow manure fire, the crackling flame so sizzling hot that flickered and flared and fired the pot the beautiful pot that Juan built. Here's the tortilla, slap, slap, pat, pat, and the sausage of clay so slick and fat that became the pot, imagine that, in the wink of an eye and the blink of a cat, before it was rubbed with a piece of bone, over and over until it shone, to show off the paints all black and red, spread from the brush of hair from his head, that colored the pot for all to admire, before it was baked in the cow manure fire, the crackling flame so sizzling hot, that flickered and flared and fired the pot, the beautiful pot that Juan built. This is the clay, all squishy and white, dug in the hills from morning till night to make the tortilla, slap, slap, pat, pat, and the sausage of clay so slick and fat that became the pot, imagine that, in the wink of an eye and the blink of a cat, before it was rubbed with a piece of bone over and over until it shone to show off the paints all black and red, spread from, with the brush of hair from his head that colored the pot for all to admire before it was baked in cow manure fire, the crackling flame so sizzling hot that flickered and flared and fired the pot, the beautiful pot that Juan built. These are the ants that led the way and shown Juan a vein of special clay, the very best clay, all squishy and white, dug in the hills from morning till night to make the tortilla slap, slap, pat, pat, and the sausage of clay so slick and fat that became the pot, imagine that, in the wink of an eye and the blink of a cat, before it was rubbed with a piece of bone, 
over and over until it shone, to show off the paints all black and red, spread from the brush of hair from his head, that colored the pot for all to admire, before it was baked in the cow manure fire. The crackling flames so sizzling hot, that flickered and flared and fired the pot, the beautiful pot that Juan built. This is the cock that crowed at dawn, that greeted the village and woke up Juan to ride the range at break of day, gathering rocks and hunting for clay. The very best clay, all squishy and white, dug in the hills from morning till night to make the tortilla slap, slap, pat, pat, and the sausage of clay so slick and fat that became the pot, imagine that in the wink of an eye and the blink of a cat before it was rubbed with a piece of bone over and over until it shone to show off the paints all black and red spread from the brush of hair from his head that colored the pot for all to admire before it was baked in the cow manure fire. The crackling flames so slizzling hot that flickered and flared and fired the pot. The beautiful pot that Juan built. Juan Quesada's story is closely connected to his people and his land. His village, Mara Ortiz, lies on the high wind-swept grassland, wind grasslands of northern Chihuahua, between Palanganas River and the foothills of Sierra Madre Mountains in northern Mexico. The story of Mara Ortiz and its surroundings is richly diverse. The area was home to the Casas Grandes civilizations from the 11th through the 14th centuries. Later, Apache tribal people occupied the region for about 300 years. At the end of the 19th century, Mexican troops forced the Apache, tri Apache tribes to leave that part of Mexico. Mormon farmers from the United States then immigrated into that area, and the Chinese immigrants and other new arrivals began settling, settling in Mara Ortiz to work on the railroad. During the Mexican Revolution of 1910 to 1917, soldiers from opposing sides battled throughout the region, causing many people to flee. After the revolution, Mara Ortiz was home mainly to railroad workers and others who found jobs as seasonal laborers in nearby Mormon orchards and packing houses. Local farm laborers Local farm labor income was supplemented by field work in the United States and whatever cattle ranching and farming families could manage on their own at home. Until the 1980s, life was very hard and family incomes were barely enough to feed, clothe, and educate the children of Mata Ortiz. Today, Mata Ortiz looks much the same as it did back in the early 1980s. Burros still wander along dusty lanes lined with modest adobe houses and the occasional shade tree. Sandal-shod children play in, the, play in the streets with the simplest toys, while women forever battling dust with brooms and buckets of water keep watch over them. Old men returning on foot from the nearby fields, tools resting on their shoulders, give no hint of the amazing transformation that has occurred at Mata Ortiz. In 1976, an anthropologist named Spencer McCollum came across some remarkable pots in a secondhand shop in southern New Mexico. McCollum became so interested in the pieces that he set off for the Mexican frontera and found the pot's creator, Juan Quesada, in Mata Ortiz. Juan explained to the visiting anthropologist that he had hand-built the pots using only local natural materials. He told McCollum that ever since finding ancient pot shards as a child, he had known he could create pottery from the natural resources around Mata Ortiz. After 20 years of experiments, he had succeeded in recreating the primitive pot-making process of the Casa Grandes people. Spencer McCollum encouraged the talented young artist to continue his work while he introduced Juan's pottery to art patrons in the United States. Motivated by growing interest and recognition, Juan began producing more and better pots. He taught his family and neighbors to do the same and helped transform Mata Ortiz from a poor neglected village into a community of world famous artists. Now more than 400 artists live 
and work in Mata Ortiz, a village with a population of only 2,000. Nearly every house is home to at least one potter, and some households are completely made up of artists. Styles vary from potter to potter, but the same pot-making process is shared by nearly all.